welcome back to Maggie's Cottage. I hope you've been enjoying some of our videos on the renovation of our 1875 cottage in the country on some remodeling projects and DIY projects we're doing on our home in Arizona. And I hope that you like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate your support. In this video, we're going to show you how we transformed our drab and dreary laundry room in our home in Arizona into a bright, fun place that we love to go and I don't even mind doing laundry anymore. This is how it looked originally. We hadn't really done anything to it since pretty much we moved into it. We had these stock cabinets that were pretty cheap. I had put up some wallpaper border in the 1990s. And I think it was the original paint. It was pretty drab and dreary. We started by taking out those cabinets which were sitting on an old shelf. Then we needed to remove that shelf. I didn't want to invest in new appliances, but my dryer had had some rust spots on the top of it, so I wanted to fix it up a little bit. So I got this Krylon appliance epoxy, sanded down a little bit, and then went to work spraying it. Just follow the directions, make sure you have a lot of ventilation, wear some breathing protection, and went over it, let it dry, did a couple other coats, and it, look at that, it looks amazing. It almost looks like new. Even though they weren't matching appliances, they still look amazing. So didn't have to invest any money in new appliances at this time anyway. So now it was time to move on to paint. And I brought this paint back home from Maggie's Cottage. It's one of my favorite colors. It's kind of a duck egg blue. So I didn't have to purchase this paint either. I just had enough to use from leftover projects. So went to work painting the walls. It looks a little more blue before it dries, but as it dries, it turns this beautiful duck egg blue. I also needed some paint, some white paint, so picked up some of this paint. This was the paint we'd used in other projects, and so it was the same color, and I needed to paint the door. You can see it was a kind of a creamy yellowish before, and it's going to look so much better with this fresh coat of paint on it. It's going to be bright. Look at how bright the room is looking already. And we took out that old shelf, and we had a piece of wood that we had had from another project, so we didn't have to purchase that either, and that fit perfectly in there. And of course I wanted shiplap, so we went to Home Depot and got the shiplap. It was about $72 for the shiplap that we would need. We painted that up with the white paint, the same that we're using on the trim in there, and now it was time to start laying the shiplap. And if you'd like to check out our other video that tells you how to lay shiplap, we'll leave a little link for that. So Brian started, cut it, and started at the top, laying it. It's very easy, user-friendly, and you can see there's a little hole there where there is no drywall. We had had some water leak several years ago and had never placed the drywall. Well, Brian was happy. Now he wouldn't have to because he was able to just go over it with the shiplap. It went on very well. He had to cut out a few areas, and if you check out our other video, we'll tell you how to do that. You can see we added some trim along the bottom, trim along the sides, doesn't it just look amazing? I love shiplap and I like how bright it made this room look. It was always so dreary and drab and it's looking amazing. Well, this door looked better with the paint, but I also wanted to do something else to it. I wanted to add some trim to make it look like a custom door. So we got out the chop saw and I had some trim that had been left over from another project. And so we measured that up. Brian cut it to the length that we needed. Very easy to do. And then it was time to mark it on the door where we were going to put it. And he was going to apply it using liquid nails and his staple gun. And he used brad nails and a staple gun to attach that. So I started putting it up to the wall, marking where it needed to be. And of course we want it level. So he used his level to make sure that it was in the right spot. He started with the top piece, put that on, then started with the two side pieces. And I was already getting excited. It's already looking so much better. So he got the two side pieces attached, put on the bottom piece, lined up everything, made sure it was a level, and then put the brad nails in. And there it was, the top piece. But we still need to do the bottom piece, but isn't that so beautiful? I love the way it's turning out. So on to the bottom. Started again with the top piece, use the liquid glue, and moved on to the side pieces. This is such an inexpensive and easy way to update your doors. Look at that. Doesn't that look so much better than just that flat panel door? But we had one more door in the mudroom, or I mean, excuse me, the laundry room that goes into the 
into it so we had to buy some trim for this I think we spent around ten dollars for this trim it's a little bit thinner than the trim on the outside door but I thought that was fine for our inside doors to have a little bit smaller and so he attached that the exact same way that he had done the others but this was the doorknob it was pretty sad these are pretty old gold worn out so I picked up some Rust-Oleum automotive primer and some Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer. It was about $11. Took all the hardware off, every little piece you're going to need to spray. And I sanded them up a little bit, roughed them up a little bit, then put them in a cardboard box, stuck them in there to make it easier to spray. And then I began spraying first with the automotive primer, went over all of those, even the tops of the screws, and then used the other one to finish it off and it's looking amazing and of course you do all pieces. I had a wreath holder also that I decided to paint as well. It was an ugly gold and I wanted it to match the hardware. I really love the way this turned out. There it is. It looks so much better. And of course I say $11 but there's a lot left and I'm going to move on to redoing my hallway next. I'm going to do all the doors there so I'll have enough for that also. So it really wasn't, it was very inexpensive. Here you can see how it looks on the door. It's pretty amazing. I really love the way it turned out. Here's a short little video of the finished product without decorating. Look at how well that dryer looks. And I love the way the shiplap turned out. That piece of wood on there is rustic and beautiful and it was free. And I love the way that this door looks. It is so much better. I love the crisp white against the decade blue also. It's so bright and cheery in here. And I have this wall that I'm gonna decorate. I'm so excited about doing some decorations in here. It's gonna be a fun place to go and do the laundry. And the door looks so much better. In this video, I hadn't done the hardware yet, but it looks so much better than that gold. So it's time to get decorating. So. I decided I was going to go to the thrift store to find a few things that I needed. I'm going to use things I have at home. And this is the things that I found. I found this wreath. I thought it was so pretty with the green and the pink flowers. I think it was $4. This metal tray that I'm going to put on the dryer. I believe it was about $4 also. Then I found this bag with moss balls and some... Uh, flower balls that I thought would look so pretty in there. I'm kind of going towards a garden theme as you can see. So I found this print, this round print. I love round pictures or oval pictures and it was a garden scene and I loved it. Um, this artificial fern I picked up also. So all this stuff was under $20. I think maybe close to $15. And then I decided I had a lot of things at home I was going to use as well. So it was going to be very inexpensive to decorate. I had this piece of board that had these little pegs in it that I'd had somewhere else I didn't need anymore but I wanted to paint it up a bit so I spray painted it with white paint and then I distressed it a little bit and went over it with some gel stain just to make it look a little bit distressed so the old color comes back through. It was time now to do something to this picture. I didn't really want the gold in there so I got out my chalk paint, Rust-Oleum chalk paint that I use a lot. It was chiffon lace I believe is the color. It's an off-white. You can see it has some pretty details, but they don't show up that well in the gold. So here's my first coat of chalk paint, and I have let it dry, then put on another coat of chalk paint, then sanded it up a bit, distressed it a bit, added some clear wax and some dark wax to bring out the details a little more. And there it is. Doesn't that look so much better? It's such a cute picture. I love it. The other thing I did was I had these frames that I'd gotten on clearance a while ago and I'd never used them so they were just put away and I'm a beginning watercolor painter and so I thought good time to paint some flowers, try my try out and see how well I can do and I can always change these as I get better. I had some baskets that I picked up from thrift stores over the years, some that were not being used for anything so I took that fern and put it in one of those. Had some other green raid picked up put that in these other baskets, put some baskets on there for storage, hung up the print. Doesn't that look amazing on the shiplap? I love the way that it turned out. Added this wreath and there's my wreath holder that I had painted that's holding it up. It looks so much better than that gold. And here's my little 
display of my watercolors and I can change those out as I get better but I thought what a great way to display some of my artwork. I had these little wreaths that I had picked up from the thrift store previous and this lamp I'd had been waiting for a spot for it that I'd gone at thrift store. I think I paid ten dollars for this and it looks so cute in there. There's the tray with the moss balls and the floral balls and a candle that I'd had sitting around forever. This little wire basket that I put my antique clothes pins in that I hadn't used and this little garden stand that had had in another room that it really didn't need to be there anymore so I brought it in there. Doesn't that look just amazing? I love the way it turned out. Well there was one more thing I needed and I had this piece of wood and some other scrap wood and I asked my son if he thought he could make something to go in between the washer and the dryer. So he took this one piece of wood and he used scrap pieces of wood that he had in his garage. He's a an amateur woodworker but he does amazing and this is what he came up with and I love it and you see that barn wood on the end that's actually barn wood that we brought home from Maggie's cottage that we used in our she shed there doesn't that look so beautiful I'm just so happy with the way that it turned out the warmth of the wood and the baskets really look so nice this is a fun room to go in and do laundry I don't even mind I love the greenery, it's kind of like a little garden room. Here's a picture with the lamp on in the evening. Who wouldn't want to go in there in the evening? I have to find reasons to go in there now and just look at it. Here's a little video of it all finished. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. This was a very inexpensive project. It was probably under $150. The shiplap was the most expensive thing that we did and that was just over $70. I went to the thrift store and spent probably $15 for things and I had other things at home that I had bought at thrift stores previous or things in another room that I wanted to change out that I brought into this room. Of course my lamp that had been waiting for a place for several years and my son built this. It cost me zero money, it cost him zero money I believe and it looks amazing. So please check out some of our other videos on the renovations of Maggie's Cottage and on our DIY projects here at our home in Arizona. And I like to give you decorating tips and ideas as well. And we've got some great videos on how to do some faux fireplaces and we've got many more videos coming up. I'm going to do my hallway that leads into this laundry room next. I appreciate your support and hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.